First of all, it is enormously important that we do not allow the media or anybody else to determine the real issues facing our lives and this country. There are a lot of great people in the media who do very, very good work, but too often what media looks, the way media looks at politics is they see it as a baseball game or a soap opera. Who's raising money? How much, how well people are doing in polls? Who said something really dumb yesterday? Who slipped on a banana peel? Who insulted somebody? Who cares? You know, people in a democracy can disagree. That's called democracy. But what is important is that we focus on the real issues that impact our lives. And that's what I am trying to do in this campaign. People may disagree with my solutions, and that's fine. But let's focus and have a real debate on the real issues that face the middle class and working families and lower income people. Second point, I will tell you something that no other candidate for president will tell you. And that is given the balance of power in America, given the fact that Wall Street and corporate, corporate America and large campaign donors have so much influence over the political and legislative process no presidents, not Bernie Sanders, not anybody else, will successfully address the real problems facing our country unless there is a political revolution. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean in English? What it means is if you think somebody else is going to do it for you, including a good president, you're wrong. Because the opposition is so strong, they won't let it happen unless tens of millions of people demand that it happen. You understand what I'm saying? If you think somebody else is going to do it for you, you're wrong. We've got to do this together. So this campaign is not just about electing Bernie Sanders. I would very much appreciate your vote and your help to make that happen. But that's not enough. I need your help during the campaign, and I will need your help the day after the campaign. All right. So let's talk about the real issues facing America that get too little discussion in this country. And Dr. West mentioned some of them, but let me touch on them. First of all, you have an issue which is, in my view, a moral issue. It is certainly an economic issue, and it is obviously a political issue. And that is the fact that in the United States of America, we have more income and wealth inequality than any other major country on earth, and it is worse today in America than at any time since 1928. What does that mean? Here's what it means. It means that in America today, the top one-tenth of one percent, I'm not talking about one percent, I'm talking about one-tenth of one percent own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Anybody here think that's moral or right? In America today, despite a huge increase in technology and productivity, 58 percent of all new income created, you know where it's going? It's going to the top 1 percent. Anyone think that makes sense? Today in America, you have one family, the Walton family, owns Walmart. One family in America owns more wealth than the bottom 40 percent 
of the American people. Anyone think that's fair? No. Now, my Republican colleagues get very nervous when we talk about distribution of wealth. They get very nervous. So let me tell you something. In the last 30 years in America, there has been a massive redistribution of wealth. What's the problem? It's gone in the wrong direction. We have seen trillions of dollars go from the pockets of working families, trillions of dollars, into the bank accounts of the top one-tenth of one percent. And brothers and sisters, you and I together are going to change the flow of that revenue. Not going to go from the middle class to the top one-tenth. It's going to go from the top one-tenth down into the pockets and the needs of working families in this country. So this campaign is sending a very strong message to the billionaire class. And that message is you cannot have it all. You are not going to get more tax breaks when children in America go hungry. You are not going to continue sending our jobs to China and other low-wage nations when millions of people in this country are in desperate need of work. You're not going to pay your CEOs of large corporations huge compensation packages and then cut the wages and health care and retirement programs of the people who work for you. That is not going to happen anymore. And when we talk about what's going on in our economy, it is important to understand that, yes, thank God, the economy today is a lot better than it was when George W. Bush left office. When Bush left office, we were losing 800,000 jobs a month. Today, we're growing 150, 200,000 jobs a month. And that's a step forward. But I want everybody here to fully understand that for the last 40 years, 40 years, the middle class of this country has been disappearing. If you are a male worker in the middle of the economy, you are making $700 less in inflation-adjusted dollars than you made 42 years ago. If you are a woman working, you're making 1500 bucks less than you made in 2007 in adjusted inflation, adjusted income. So brothers and sisters, the first issue is we need an economy that works for working families, not just a handful of billionaires. And Dr. West mentioned this, but let me elaborate on this point. Every month, the United States government comes out with a statistic on unemployment, very important issue. Last number that they came out with was that unemployment in America, official unemployment, was 5.1 percent. That is one statistic. There's another statistic. And that statistic says that if you look at unemployment, in the sense of people who have no jobs, people who have given up looking for jobs, people who are looking by the millions, working part-time when they want to work full-time, real unemployment is over 10 percent. Second point, and this is an issue I am trying to generate discussion on, not having a whole lot of luck, 
but I want to tell it to you. It's an enormously important issue. Two months ago, I asked a think tank called the Economic Policy Institute in D.C. to do a study for me. And here's what the study entailed. I wanted them to tell me what real youth unemployment in this country was. Because we don't talk about it. Youth unemployment. And here's what they discovered. If you're talking about high school graduates, not dropouts, high school graduates between 17 and 20 who are unemployed or underemployed, if the kids are white, the number is 33 percent. If the kids are Hispanic, number is 36 percent. If the kids are African American, youth unemployment is 51 percent. In other words, in other words, these are high school graduates. We are turning our backs on an entire generation of young people who want to get out into the world. They want to make some money. They want careers. They want to stand up on their own two feet. They want to get out of their parents' homes. They want to be independent. And what we're saying to millions of these young people, black and white and Hispanic, is sorry, there are no jobs available for you. You're not going to get any income. You're not going to begin to go out in the world and start a career. Now, everybody in this room knows, or should know, another very tragic fact. The United States of America has more people in jail than any other country on Earth, including China. Now, think about it. China, three times our size, communist authoritarian country. They don't tolerate dissent all that well. We have more people in jail than China does. And if anybody in this room thinks there is a, not a direct connection between outrageously high youth unemployment and the fact that we have so many people in jail, you would be terribly mistaken. All right, you're listening to Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders there at Benedict College in Columbia, South Carolina, and his resonating message.